what is going on ladies and gentlemen it is Clyde from Jacker's Edit otherwise known as Masquerade Jacker and in this new training series I'm going to teach you exactly how I made Lost in Fantasy episode 1 exquisite. So to begin with you will need to download one plugin in particular it is called Jan Fly's Engine Core so go on Google and type it down Jan Fly that's an MV Engine Core visit the official website and if you scroll down you can find the downloads you can download the english version from dropbox or mirror but in this example i'm going to use dropbox to download it when you get to the website it might ask you to sign in but uh you don't need to sign in to uh, or create an account just to download this file just, just hit download see right here it's going to ask you it's also going to inform you that this file could be a harm but it isn't so just continue to download it I've already downloaded the plugin um, as you could probably tell because there's a one over here once you have downloaded the file open up your MV uh, game and uh, create a new project if you've already made a project then that's fine go on choose to uh, select which folder you want to save this game in I'm gonna save it in my document uh, on games and uh, right here just select this folder I've already have multiple uh, games in the folder so altogether it should be on your user uh, on documents and then games once this project is fully installed go back to your files and go on downloads to copy the uh, engine core that you just downloaded so go on copy go on your document Find the game folder and the folder that you made the new game in, so which is Lost in Fantasy. Go on the JS, it's basically the plugins folder. Go on plugins and just paste it on this uh, folder. So now you have uh, one more plugin added into the rest of uh, what was already given to you. Go back to your new project and hit the plugin manager. It might ask you if you want a splash screen that is basically that icon that appears before the game starts. I don't necessarily use it so I'm going to turn it off and just uh, go and edit and import the plugin that you just downloaded. So it is Yenfly's engine core. This is what the default setting should look like. To begin with you will need to change the screen size so rather than just having a box like this uh, window right here this window right here is basically the same size as the game screen so you want to change it change the width into 124 I think and change the height into 576 uh, this is important to have your setting of the screen this amount because if you have it any higher than that such as 1280 by 720 then when you play test the game you will see more of the map and the, the size of the character and sprites will be smaller and you don't want that this is what the game would look like if you run uh, your game in this setting with these screen settings um, as you can see, the resolution of the game is on widescreen, uh, filling up the entire screen. You will be able to see the characters at a normal size and the map isn't too big and wide. But if we change the dimension of the screen, for example, uh, go, on, go back to the engine core. If you change the width to, uh, let's say, 1920 by, by 180, save it then go test this game see if you make the dimensions of the game too big you will see a lot more of the map and uh, the characters will be smaller and you don't want that you want the players to actually see the character and less of the map because if you have more of the map then it's not going to be mysterious anymore like for example if you're trying to find a secret passage it's not going to be much of a mystery when the players are able to see the entire map so change the width and height back to 1024 by 576 okay now that you have created your new project and you got the window screen at the right dimensions um, you're gonna have to create a forest map because in Lost in Fantasy 2 you notice that this is a forest map and it's not just a small map it's pretty big as well so to do that it's pretty obvious go at the bottom left of the box right click and hit edit change this name into forest 
or and actually change it into map one because that is what I did with my game and a tile set to an outside and uh, the width should be bigger than seven to 17 and a height 13 so change it to something like 50 for example it's going to be a boxed map so hit ok and you will notice that the tile set at the left side is different from the world map and uh, if we zoom out a little bit it's a pretty big map already before we begin mapping I have to tell you a little secret that I use to create my maps and uh, the secret thing about creating huge maps uh, huge detailed maps in a very short amount of time is that I did not use a mouse to create this um, neither did I use a touchpad from the laptops instead what I did was I used a drawing tablet to create these maps to jot down the trees very fast uh, because if you try to uh, create maps using a mouse or worse which is the laptop touchpad then it's just gonna take up a lot of your time in compared to using one of the touchpad uh, for example uh, the one I use personally, the one I have, is the Hyon H610. You can get this tablet from Amazon, which I will be linking in a description below. Be sure to hit that link and save that link to your favorites, just in case you want to purchase it. If you don't want to get the same Hyon that I have, then you can get a cheaper version of this Hyon by visiting the second link that I will provide in the description. This Hyon is the H420. It still functions right, but it's just less, it has less buttons on the actual tablet. So visit these, these links, and if you are considering to buy it, save it in your favorites so that you could easily go back. All right, so jump back to um, the map, and I'm just going to uh, create a forest map using the Hyon tablet. I will fast forward this video so that you could see the process I went through. I will also do some sort of commentary as it is playing, okay? To begin your mapping, you need to fill out the entire floor set uh, with grasses. Uh, that includes these long grasses. Place them all over the map and I highly recommend you put down flowers as well. Put down flowers and jot it down all over the map before you can move on to any higher layers such as the trees. I'm going to split this map into three parts of the lands. One land at the top, one at the right and the bottom and left will be bigger than the rest. And now I am moving with the river that is flowing at the center of the map. If you are putting trees, I recommend you fill out the edges first, the corners, so that the screen of the game will not force the player to go at the very corner of the map because as long as the player is at the corner of the map and there isn't any trees to restrict the players from going to the corner, it will make the map look really small and you don't want that. You want a map that looks big, bigger than it actually is. So to do that, fill out the corners and the edges of the map with trees. The majority of times you will be filling out and fixing the trees. As I said about the flooring map, you need to design the floor tiles before you can move on to any upper layers of the map. The upper layers are like trees and objects. The ground floor tiles should be the overgrown grass and the flowers. This also includes the river. You want to jot down some designs on the river such as the flowers. Um, after you've done the trees, move on to adding the bushes on the map. Uh, you don't want to block out any pathway, so be careful where you are jotting down these bushes. But as you can see right now, I am now adding the flowers onto the ground floor. From the first section of the map, I'm not using this as a bridge because it kind of adds ground floor within the river stream and it doesn't look real. So instead I went on the second tile set and uh, used one of these roofs to show it is a bridge. And at the very end I realized that I also used the wrong uh, tile set to create the river and now I'm going over them with a lighter tile set. 
now that you have done your map this is what it should look like you have the uh, details on the ground floor you also have variations of the tree if you already have some sort of customized tile set and you want to add a little bit more variation on the trees then you can do that the path can be blocked off by bushes and these cut down trees or any logs you want to add flowers are walkable however rivers are not 